The cruising spinnaker is the one sail you can use that will make your boat much more lively and fun. Not needing a spinnaker pole, the cruising spinnaker is the perfect sail for shorthanded cruising crews. In an effort to demystify the sail, UK Sailmakers has created this instructional video on how to hoist, douse, jibe, and trim the cruising spinnaker. The generic name for these sails is the asymmetrical poleless cruising spinnaker. Needless to say, every sailmaker has come up with a much shorter name. At UK Sailmakers, we call the sail the Flasher because it makes downwind sailing fast and fun. The name Spinnaker, Cruising Spinnaker, and Flasher will be used interchangeably in this video. Sail handling is simplified by the dousing sock that encases the sail during sets and douses. When sailing, the sock sits on top of the flasher, bunched up like an accordion. The sock, which we call the stasher, does the work of several long-armed crew members. The other equipment you'll need is a spinnaker halyard, two sheets, two sheet blocks, a tack line, a block for the tack line, and a tack collar. A spinnaker halyard is different than a jib halyard since it exits the mast above the forestay. This is important since the whole sail flies in front of the forestay at all times. The tack line must be long enough to come from a cockpit winch to a block as far forward as possible and up to the tack of the sail. The tack collar goes around the roller furled Genoa or the forestay and then clips to the tack of the flasher. It helps stabilize the sail and at the same time lets the sail rotate from side to side. The two spinnaker sheets need to be twice the length of the boat. Picking the right sized line is critical. Thick lines are easy on your hands when trimming, but the heavy line creates a lot of friction when you are trying to jibe the sail. Thin lines allow the sail to fly in the lightest of zephyrs, but they don't work well in self-tailing winches. The only good solution is to use tapered sheets. Tapered sheets are a combination of a thin line spliced to a thick line. These sheets are both strong enough for the loads of heavy winds, yet light enough to let the sail fill when the breeze goes soft. The width of the tail section can be sized to fit your winch's self-tailor. The final pieces of equipment are two sheet blocks that attach to the aft corners of your boat. When you order the flasher and stasher new, you'll receive the sail already in the sock. After that, the two stay together. But just in case, here's how to set up the flasher in the sock. Lay out the spinnaker folded in half lengthwise, then stretch out the stasher without any twist. Pick up the fiberglass mouth and pull the sock around your arm so that you can reach the shackle inside the top of the sock. Connect the head ring of the flasher to the shackle and pull the bottom of the sock down until the sail is encased. Once the flasher has been installed in the dousing sock, it needs to be packed into the sail bag. To make raising the sail easier, the three corners of the sail need to be at the top of the bag when finished. To pack the bag properly, grab the sock four feet up from the fiberglass mouth and put that part in the bag first. Now working your way up, stuff the rest of the sail sock combo into the bag. When you get to the top of the stasher, leave it outside the bag for a moment. Next put the fiberglass stasher mouth in the bag and stuff the loose sail material into the center of the mouth. Finally, tie the tack, clue, and top of the stasher together so that they cannot get tangled in the bag. Now it's time to rig the boat and go sailing. The first step in rigging the boat is to attach the sheet blocks to the aft corners of the boat. Use whatever attachment point is convenient. Any type of strong block works. Now run the sheets, starting with the one that will be used to fly the sail before the first jibe. Attach the shackle to the leeward lifeline halfway between the bow pulpit and the shrouds. Take the coil of line aft outside the shrouds and lifelines to a turning block at the aft corner of the boat. Run the line through the block and then up to the trimming winch. In this case, the boat has a snatch block that opens to allow the line to be rigged without pulling it all the way through from the end. The second sheet is the lazy sheet and won't be used until you jibe. Clip the shackle next to the first one, then take the end of the sheet forward around the forestay, outside the lifelines, and then back to the other corner of the boat. Make sure to keep the sheet outside the shrouds. Next, rig the tack line. This line is used to adjust the height of the tack. Begin by attaching a block as far forward as possible. On some boats, there's a bale on top of the anchor roller, which is a great spot. 
Shown here, the block is attached behind the force stay, which is okay but not the best since the tack line will wrap around the force stay after a jibe. Next, tie the end of the line off by the bow pulpit and run the end back to a winch in the cockpit. Before bringing the spinnaker on deck, turn the boat downwind and roll up your Genoa. Sailing downwind will make the deck level and easier to work on. Now bring the spinnaker bag on deck and clip or tie the bag to the lifelines on the side of the boat from which the sail will be flying. Many bags have been lost overboard by not attaching it to the boat. Open the bag and untie the three corners of the sail. Attach the two spinnaker sheets to the clue of the sail. Make sure they never get led under the lifelines. Pass the tack collar around the roller furling Genoa and clip the hook to the ring on the tack. Next page. Clip or tie the tack line to the tack ring. Make sure the tack line does not cross over the spinnaker sheet that goes in front of the force stay. Next, tension the tack line so that the tack will be about four feet off the deck when the halyard is raised. Finally, attach the halyard to the top of the stasher. Before raising the halyard, make sure you're still on a broad reach with the boom eased out to the shrouds. Easing the main so far creates a wind shadow to raise the flasher in. Blocking the wind from the flasher during sets and douses removes all the load from the sail. Another trick that will make setting the sail easier is to trim the sheet so that the clue of the flasher is halfway between the shrouds and the stern of the boat. Pre-trimming the sail this way prevents the sail from twisting around the headstay during the set. Once the halyard is all the way up and secured, it's time to raise the sock and go sailing. While in a secure position like sitting in the middle of the foredeck or standing at the leeward shrouds with an arm around a stay, raise the sock halyard. Once the sock is up all the way, tie the sock halyard somewhere where it can't get away. It doesn't matter where you tie it, but make sure it's secure. To reinforce these lessons, the next sequence shows the whole hoisting process from off the boat. Notice how the flasher stays listless while the sock is being raised. This is because the flasher is in the wind shadow of the main. After the sail is up all the way, have the person on the helm head up 10 or 20 degrees and the sail will snap full. If you can't get back to the cockpit to trim the sheet or alter course, don't worry if the chute flaps around. It's more important to get the sock halyard tied off before trimming the spinnaker. The nylon material we use is tough and can handle the luffing. Notice the asymmetrical shape of the sail. The tack is just above the bow pulpit and the clue is 10 to 15 feet in the air. This is because the luff of the sail is longer than the leech. The asymmetrical shape of the sail makes it easier to trim than a normal symmetrical spinnaker. The rounder entry allows the sail to luff quite a bit before collapsing. Trimming a flasher is simplicity itself. The tack line controls the sail's shape and the sheet controls the sail's angle to the wind. When trimming the flasher on a beam reach, lower the tack to just above the bow pulpit. After setting the boat on course, ease the sheet until a curl appears along the luff of the sail. With the tack down low, you'll be able to steer to the curl. If the curl is constant, turn the boat away from the wind until it stops, or trim the sheet a little. Trimming the sheet is no different than trimming any other sail. Let the sheet out until the sail starts to curl, then pull it in enough to make it stop. When using an autopilot with a flasher, don't set the course button while the sail has a curl. Instead, either over trim the sail or fall off a few degrees so that the autopilot has a margin of error before the sail collapses. Setting the height takes a practiced eye. Here's what to look for. The leading edge of the sail should be straight and the highest horizontal seam in the sail should be parallel to the water. The green lines show the straight luff and horizontal seam parallel to the water. If the leading edge of the sail has a bow in it, like the area circled, then the tack is too high. The tack is too low if the horizontal seam is higher at the leech than it is at the luff, as in the third photo. 
In light air, the sail can be carried on a very close reach. By tightening the tack line and pulling the tack practically to the deck, the front of the sail gets very round and the rest of the sail flattens out. The sail practically takes the shape of a Genoa. The masthead wind indicator shows the sail being used with the wind forward of the beam. But when the breeze picks up, your boat will heel over too much if you try to sail too close to the wind. In stronger breezes, your boat will be more comfortable with the wind after the beam. When sailing on a very broad I'm reach, good, good. ease the tack line so that the luff of the sail will rotate to windward of the forestay as shown here. You can see how this gets most of the sail out of the wind shadow created by the mainsail. Another effect of raising the luff is that the middle of the sail will flatten out projecting more sail to the wind. Since the sail wobbles around a lot when you try to sail dead downwind, it is faster and easier to jibe downwind. Believe it or not, it's faster to sail a zigzag course than a straight line when it comes to making distance dead downwind. Here's how to jibe the cruising spinnaker. When jibing the flasher, the sail will turn inside out as the clue and sheets go around the front of the boat. The trick to doing this is to have the wind push the sail forward so that it streams out like a flag and then moves to the other side of the boat. To enlist the help of the wind, you'll need to let it blow directly onto the flasher. Do this by trimming the main tight so that the wind blows past it onto the flasher. As the boat turns downwind, let go of the sheet. I mean, really let it run. Now as the boat turns, the whole sail moves to the new side of the boat effortlessly. Once the sail switches sides, pull it in and ease out the main. Let's watch that again from off the boat. With three crew members, the mainsail is trimmed tight as the spinnaker sheet is eased. As the boat approaches dead downwind, the sheet is released fully so that the flasher streams out in front of the boat. As the stern of the boat turns through the wind, the new sheet is trimmed. Finally, the mainsail is eased back out. Okay, here's the same maneuver from on the boat. The mainsail is trimmed as the spinnaker sheet is eased. With the main on center line, the wind can blow the spinnaker out in front of the headstay. As the boat turns, the spinnaker moves to the new leeward side. The new spinnaker sheet is trimmed as the clue passes across the center line. After the spinnaker is trimmed properly, the main is eased to its new position. This sequence looks aft into the cockpit showing how simply two people can jibe the flasher. First, the person on the helm uncleats the flasher sheet and gets ready to release it, while the other person trims the main. As the boat turns, the spinnaker sheet is released as fast as it will go out. At the same time, the second person is pulling the new sheet once the clue is in front of the headstay. When the spinnaker is trimmed properly, it is cleated off and the main sheet is eased out. Here it is again, just to watch. In gentle winds, the benefit of lightweight sheets become greatly apparent. Heavy sheets make the clue of the spinnaker sag and prevent the clue from being blown forward of the headstay in the jibe. This is hard enough in light air to do without the added weight of heavy sheets. And if the sheets are attached to the sail with bolins instead of small shackles, you'll compound the problem of heavy sheets with the friction created by large knots. The knots can get hung up on the lifelines, forestay, tack collar, and shroud so the sail is pulled from one side of the boat to the other. This shot shows how well the sail flies in almost no wind with lightweight sheets. Heavier sheets would keep the sail from flying in these conditions. Finally, here's a perfect light air jive. Even in the faint breeze, the glue blows forward of the headstay. Notice that the sheet is over trimmed on the new side to get the sail to fill and eased out to proper trim. The key to a controlled dousing of the flasher is to have the flasher luffing so that it is easy to pull the sock down. The best way is to completely blanket the chute behind the mainsail. With the chute hanging limp in the mainsail's wind shadow, it is simple to pull the stasher down. Once the sleeve is down, the chute is totally under control. Therefore, if there is only one person on the foredeck, after the sock encases the sail, 
he or she can put an arm around the sock and then move to the mast to release the spinnaker halyard. If the halyard leads after the cockpit, the person in the cockpit can release the spinnaker halyard. To clear the sail quickly from the deck, lower the sail sock combo through the forward hatch. Packing the sail in the bag is easier down below where nothing can blow overboard. Now let's watch this maneuver filmed from on the boat. The boat is on a run with the boom eased out to the shroud to create a large wind shadow over the flasher. The sail is limp as the stasher is pulled down over the sail. Once the sock is down all the way, the person in the cockpit releases the spinnaker halyard and the sail is lowered into the forward hatch. Finally, the tack collar is cleared so that the last part of the sail can be pushed below where the sail can be packed into its bag as detailed in the beginning of the video. Once you become comfortable using the flasher, you'll use it every time you go out sailing. The flasher turbocharges any boat. In light air, you'll be able to reach at the speed of the wind, and by jibing downwind in under 10 knots of breeze, you'll be able to sail when in the past you would have resorted to the engine. In fact, one of the flasher's nicknames is the downwind diesel. Just imagine sailing while others around you are motoring. And there are few things worse than motoring downwind with the smell of engine exhaust hanging over the cockpit. In a good breeze, you'll enjoy the turbocharged feel of your boat so much that every time you go out, you'll choose a course that allows you to set the flasher.